my name is Kenton. Uh, wel welcome, welcome all to the healthcare and environment panel. Um, I'm the events manager of ICDSS, and today in the healthcare and environment session, we'll begin with um, some uh, three presentations, uh, and then we'll move on to a panel with uh, more speakers. And so, when we think of like uh, people in the world, we think of uh, humans who are like capable of doing many amazing things. Uh, technological development has accelerated in the past few decades, and at this moment, uh, it's really advanced. There's AI, machine learning. They're growing at a pace where we're struggling to understand the what decisions that AI and uh, all these algorithms make. And even though like uh, as human, as powerful as humans are, humans are actually very vulnerable. Um, quite, quite recently, um, we've had this virus. Uh, until today, the SARS-CoV-2 virus has killed over 1.2 million people in the world, which is very concerning. And there are um, disparities that occur um, in terms of uh, the socioeconomic socio status that predispose uh, people towards certain diseases. And it's quite interesting to see how uh, data science, uh, technology, uh, all of these uh, novel algorithms can help us uh, process through the massive amounts of data we generate in the 21st century and output some interesting insights towards not only things that are related towards the pandemic, but other uh, issues in healthcare and the environment. So hopefully in, today in the healthcare and environment session, we'll be able to uh, explore more of this in detail. And so um, harnessing by harnessing th these impacts, we'll be able to inform those with uh, decision making powers uh, to make change for the world and um, make the world a better place. So uh, right now I would like to introduce our first uh, presentation speakers. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, we have two speakers now, uh, Josh and Kevin, who are both data scientists in KPMG's Lighthouse team. Uh, KPMG is part of the big four accounting firms and is, it is very interesting to see how data science is used actively in industry. Aside from healthcare, Josh and Kevin's interests are in banking, retail, and the charity sectors. They have used various techniques such as causal inference, clustering, and natural language processing to understand various data. And so today the, the title of their talk is using, using machine learning to help protect children from abuse and neglect. Uh, identifying abuse and neglect is very challenging in a classroom setting. Um, Josh and Kevin have worked together with the National Society for the Prevention of Cruelty to Children and have assimilated lots of data to support teachers in their responsibilities. They've also provided a new way for children to, uh, to gain support via a chatbot called Nelly. Here, they will explore the machine learning technologies they will implement in the alpha phase build of Nelly, as well as its limitations. Um, let us move on to the presentation. Um, is Josh and Kevin in the, the call? Oh, uh, yeah. We're here. Do you guys yeah. want to share your screen instead? Because yes. requested yeah, that, sure. right? All right. Let me know when you can see it. Yep, we can see it fine. Yeah. Yeah. So, hi, folks. Thanks for joining. Um, as mentioned, Kevin and I are from the uh, KPMG Data Science and Engineering team. Um, so, today we're going to talk about a proposition that was developed uh, for the NSPCC. Um, uh, to help protect children from abuse and neglect. So what's the problem we're trying to solve? So currently teachers are required to monitor abuse and neglect um, in the classroom setting. And the way this is done 
is by tracking observations and signals through a system called CPOMS. Um, and this involves teachers identifying what they believe might be abuse and neglect uh, and tracking them in these kind of text fields. This is then analysed by a head teacher once a week or so to determine whether any action needs to be taken regarding social services or that kind of thing. So there's a couple of key problems with this approach. First of all, identifying abuse and neglect is extremely, ex extremely difficult. It's generally identified over a series of observations that on their own might, might not be obvious as abuse and neglect. And generally, a lot of these signals are actually obscured from view. For example, is if, if a child is undergoing physical abuse, that abuse might be bruise, bruises on their back, which would not be obvious to, to a teacher. And secondly, the actual job of, of trawling through all this, all this data and trying to understand these signals is actually extremely difficult. And when we spoke to teachers, that was particularly difficult for, for new teachers and an extremely daunting task. So the proposed approach that we gave was kind of twofold. The first, the first, the first part was to um, build a machine learning model to predict probabilities of abuse, neglect, and sexual abuse from the CPOMS data. This wouldn't uh, kind of remove the role of a teacher to action any insights they have. This would support the teacher as a reporting tool or possibly an early warning um, signal. And secondly, we propose building a chatbot called Nellybot, which aimed at tackling the first issue we identified of trying to uh, bring to light some of the signals that might that might not be obvious to teachers um, by promoting children to to reach out to um, children uh, to teachers or adults that they feel they can trust, and as well as that, Nelly could capture and um, provide a understanding about whether the child might be going through abuse or neglect if the child wishes for that data to be shared with a teacher. Uh, um, so I'm sure you're all aware of um, digital assistants like Alexa and Google Home um, and commercial and customer service chatbot use is now quite well established. But there's been a recent growing interest in the creation of chatbots for tackling social issues. Um, fear of judgment is a big deterrent for many people with regards to seeking help and advice. Um, and when chatbots work, they can be less, da less daunting, non-judgmental alternatives to face-to-face -face discussions. Um, and unlike most traditional services, they're available 24-7, which is why we thought that um, a chatbot, and in this case, Nellybot, would be um, an important part of the solution. So as part of this hackathon and to kind of demonstrate what we might build in an alpha phase, we put together a little demo. So this demo is aimed at trying to illustrate how a child may interact with Nellybot and how the kind of answers and responses we may build in an alpha phase. So Say I'm a child and I log on to Nannybot and my name is Oliver Twist. Um, so then Nelly has, asks how I am and today I'm feeling quite sad. Now, in the alpha phase, we'd aim for Nelly to probably have two ML algorithms. First of all, one for identifying um, emotion and another for identifying abuse or neglect. Oliver feeling sad is not necessarily a signal of abuse or neglect, but it is something that we, we'd want Nelly to explore further. So let's say today some of the boys teasing me because my clothes smell for Oliver. So as mentioned, we'd want to develop a, an algorithm that can identify signals of abuse and neglect, relate those to abuse or neglect. And then 
using a template architecture, which Kevin is going to explain a bit a bit um, a bit later on, build generic responses when Nelly detects there might be abuse or neglect, and in this case, neglect. So um, Nelly asks if Oliver is usually on his own at home, and Oliver responds with, yes, I'm usually home. And when, okay, and then as mentioned, Nelly doesn't action or provide any counseling or provide any um, intervention at all. It merely tries to tries to push all of us to speak to a teacher or someone that he trusts. Um, so given we haven't um, entered any of the build phase at the moment, Kevin and I have been looking at other chatbots in this kind of arena and how they've been developed, um, how we might therefore develop ours and some kind of challenges with those. Yes, so um, we looked at kind of three chatbots that have been made to tackle social issues. Um, first of all, the Me Too Maastricht chatbot, which is which was built in the city of Maastricht in the Netherlands as part of a wider solution to tackling um, rising instances of sexual harassment. Um, then the Rainbow chatbot, which was a chatbot um, targeted at South African women, um, and the function was to educate them about domestic abuse. Um, and the Wobot chatbot, which was made for children to report domestic abuse, to report abuse, um, and goes as far as offering cognitive behavioural therapy um, as part of the bot. Um, so the Me Too chatbot is the chatbot that's most similar to ours um, because the intention of the chatbot is to capture information and hand it off to the necessary authorities. Um, and in our case, it would be handing it off to um, either the Childline Services or teachers. Um, it's built with a template ar architecture using an ensemble um, that involves TFIDF and Dr. Vec um, with logistic regression to predict whether um, it's harassment or not harassment. Um, and it's this similar intention that I've mentioned about you know, capturing information and then kind of passing that on. Um, because of that, we, would, we kind of propose using a similar architecture um, with the template architecture. However, possibly using um, a CNN or LSTM with attention to predict our labels. Um, then the Wobot chatbot, as I mentioned, is men it was made to for children to be able to report abuse. Um, and even in meticulously designed robots um, or chatbots such as this one, things can go wrong. Um, and in 2018, the Wobot was um, criticised by BBC for specific types of neglect. Um, and not signposting emergency services when um, it received messages indicative of the users needing immediate attention. Um, this is an example of how oversights can have serious ramifications when designing chatbots around difficult topics such as these. Um, and we try and avoid this by, again, as I've mentioned, using a template architecture and working really closely with the NSPCC to finely tune and specifically design our question and answer pairs. Um, to avoid muddled or inappropriate responses. Um, and the Rainbow Chatbot, um, as I mentioned, was created for women in South Africa to try and educate them about um, domestic abuse. Um, it uses quizzes and stories to try and um, educate, educate users. Um, and we propose using similar techniques to test, to test improvements in our in Nelly bot and to kind of gauge engagement. Um, and an implementation issue that they had, um, the Rainbow team had with with um, 